Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is five o'clock. Good morning, Miss Gilchrist. It is five o'clock, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Um, thank you for joining me for this Winning Wednesday um, for Word Empowerment Wednesday. And I pray that each of you have had a blessed and wonderful week thus far. If not, just look, just take a look at yourself and see how blessed you are because you're still here. And that's a blessing within itself. Amen. This morning, I would like for you to I'd like to turn your attention to the book of Second Samuel, chapter 15 and verse number 12. The book of Second Samuel, chapter 15 and verse number 12. I am going to be reading this out of a different version this morning. It will be coming out of the New English Translation, which is called NET, N-E-T. So we're going to read just this one verse in your hearing. And it says that while he was offering sacrifices, Absalom sent for Aphrodel, the Gileadite. David's advisor to come from the city galore. The conspiracy was gaining momentum and the people were starting to side with Absalom. And I'm going to read that latter part of that verse. The conspiracy was gaining momentum and the people were starting to side with Absalom. So when I got off the line last week, I started, and which I do every week, I started seeking the Lord um, for what he would have for me to share with you on today. And the word that kept sticking out was momentum. Um, when we look at this word, um, there's momentum in the physical sense as well as momentum in the spiritual sense. And so when we look at the spiritual momentum of, of how we should be, if we just take a look around us and, you know, we we'll see that we should be, there are some things that we should be active in and that we should be growing. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't know about you, but if we can be transparent this morning, there are um, some things that we are lacking. We're lacking our spiritual momentum. So therefore, being that we are lacking this, as many times we become stuck in what we call a spiritual what. And that just simply means we've lost our momentum. So this calls for now a renewing, a transformation. Um, um, in fact, it, it should be a point in our lives where we're moving forward into a greater mass um, with an urgent velocity. And so when we take momentum now, we begin to define this word. And I took the liberty of defining it. When we go to Merriam-Webster, it simply means a property of a moving body that the body has by virtue of its mass and its motion that is equal now to the the product of the body's mass and velocity. Okay, now she said a whole lot there, but in simpler terms, what that simply means, it is the strength or the force gained by motion or series of events. So the thought that the Lord gave me is we must deal with it. We must deal with it. Amen. When we go to the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 7, it says, For there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, and it will sprout again, and its shoots will not cease. And I'm going to read that again. For there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and it, that its shoots will not cease. In other words, you can cut a tree down, but if it's still rooted, there is a chance that that tree will still grow. Why is this? Because if the tree continues to produce sprouts with leaves, then in time, there may be more root growth. However, there is a solution 
remove any sprouts that develop from the roots as soon as they begin to grow. How many of you know that that is the problem with many of the people of God? We haven't learned how to remove any sprouts to keep it from growing. So it has been said now the production of these sprouts is to our advantage because in order to produce these sprouts, the tree must withdraw food stored in its root. So as you remove the sprout now, you begin to rob the tree of that stored food and reduce the size of the root by reducing the food that's stored in it. So it is that if we keep feeding now a stray cat, guess what? He's going to keep coming around. He's going to keep hanging around. And before you know it, they are, they are going to multiply. I learned this as a child. You can still call the cat, the cat catcher all you want. But until you deal with the sprouts, the root of the problem, you're simply wasting your time. Good morning, mom. So, and if the root problem is messing up your sewer system now, and it is in a older type, then it would eventually get worse. Why? Because the older types are prone to leakage. So, the older it is, and the longer you hold on to it, instead of dealing with it, my God, you're going to have problems. Mm. So many times we hold on to things from where we was a little child. So many times we hold on to stuff that really don't matter. But until we deal with the matter at hand, it is going to sprout up and you can cut that tree down all you want. But it is still going to be a root problem. And so it is. And we look at the text this morning. Absalom had a problem with his father, King David. David, who in turn also had a problem. Why? Because they did not learn how to deal with the issue at hand. Instead, what they began to do now was to sweep it under the rug. Hmm. How many of you have been told as you were growing up, what goes on in our house, stay in our house. Yet there's a problem and we neglect to deal with it. My God, good morning, cousin. And so here we find that as we look at Epsilon now, he was praised for being handsome. And in fact, he was the most handsome man in all Israel. He was flawless from head to toe. In fact, his hair was so uh, magnificent or so glorious that he would go get it cut because there was because of the weight of his hair. And everyone loved him. How many of you know that you can dress it up on the outside, my God, but it's what in the heart that counts. We can put on all the pretty hats, we can put on all the suits that we want, and we can do all we can to look good on the outside when God actually sees the ugliness in those things that we got hidden inside of our hearts that is not pleasing unto him. And so we find that Epsilon now was full of pride. He was full of greed. He tried to overthrow the plans of God, my God. So he longed now for protection. He longed for punishment of his brother Amnon. Why? Because the whole issue, the root of the problem was this. Amnon had raped his sister Tamar. And as a result now, after two years, he sought for avenge. He invited all of David's sons to a feast just so that he can plot and kill his brother Amnon. Understand and know this that it is that what happens now when we don't deal with the problem at hand. When we hold on to stuff, eventually it's going to cause us to do some things, my God, that we should not do. And so we find that he had the spirit of retaliation and the spirit of rebellion. My God, one thing led to another. And the Bible declared now that Absalom, he began to undermine his father, King David. He spoke against the man of God to the people, which leads me to my first point. 
Point number one, we got to be careful how you speak, how we speak against God's people. My God, for the Bible tells us that Absalom, he went to Hebron and he gathered up an army and he spoke against his father and he sent messengers throughout the land proclaiming now his kingship. He thought he was doing a good thing. All he was trying to do was trying to get the people to go against his father so that he could be the king. My God. Which brings me to point number two. Don't fight fire with fire. <laughs> Oh, I don't care how many times they speak against you. I don't care how many times they talk about you. I don't care how they ostracize your name, put your name on a signpost. I do not care how they treat you. It's not how they treat you. It's how you treat them back. Don't fight fire with fire. I know sometimes we want to retaliate and take matters into our own hands, especially when someone has wronged us. But I want to tell somebody this morning, as Paul declared in Romans 12 and 19, he said, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it has been written, Vengeance is mine. God said, I will repay. Mm, my God, I will repay. So when David now, when he began to hear of what his son was up to, he and his followers fled Jerusalem. Mm. He said, you know what? Instead of having a confrontation with my, with my son, I just leave. Sometimes you just got to learn how to turn the other cheek. I know it's hard. Sometimes you just got to walk away. You don't have to respond to every every comment. You don't have to respond to every remark that someone says to you. Do not fight fire with fire. My God. Number three, be careful of who you listen to, especially when you are in your vulnerable moments. And I say that again. Be careful who you listen to. In fact, I'm going to go a step further. Be careful who you sound off to, especially in your vulnerable moments. You want to know why? Because the enemy knows how to set up devices for your downfall. Yeah, he's, he's watching. He's raiding. And he will use it against you. In the court of law, what do they say? You have every right to remain silent. Instead of sounding off to somebody, instead of listening to everybody else, learn how to go to God. My God. So the Bible says this, that Absalom, he took the advice from his counselors on the best way to defeat his father. <laughs> and get, and which bring me to point number four. The very thing a person now that lifts you up will bring you down. Just take a look at Jesus. The very ones that praised him on Monday were the very ones by the end of the week was saying crucify him. The very thing a person that lifts you up will bring you down. So the Bible says now that Absalom, he was riding his mule from the battle and he came to a tree. The very thing that the people loved the most was his beautiful hair. And it was his hair that got him in trouble. <laughs> the Bible said, my God, his hair was entangled in the branches. And guess what? The, the, what brought him there left him there. The Bible said the mule left him and he was left hanging in the air helplessly. Why? <laughs> The mule left him. His hair was tangled up. And the Bible says while he was hanging there, that gave Joab the opportunity to kill him. The very thing a person that lifts you up will bring you down. This is why we have to be mindful and we have to be careful when praises, when people begin to praise you.
And I've been taught this in ministry. When people praise you, you get it off of you and you, you put it on God because it has nothing to do with you. You got to be careful now when people begin to give you accolades because everybody is not for you. Oh, yeah, the enemy got some jealousy in the camp. The enemy got some people that is waiting, my God, to attack you. Which bring me to my last point. I told you we must deal with it. Those sprouts, we must deal with the sprouts. Absalom took matters into his own hands. He followed unwise, ungodly counsel. And he will begin, he began to rebel against his father. I wonder this morning now, what would have happened if there was some type of a line of communication between my God, Absalom and his father? I wonder if they would have sat down and talked about it instead of saying, you know what, what goes on in this house stays in this house. I wonder now what would have happened to many relationships today and we would learn how to deal with it. No, we see wrong and we just let it go. We see wrong or we talk about it. We see wrong and we don't try to correct it. We see that there's a, a, a disconnect instead of talking about it and trying to reconcile. What do we do? We turn the other way. In fact, instead of going to the person, we, are, we make assumptions. Mm, my God. We are seeing them in church. So, so my, my, my um, way out or my escape is to do what? To walk the other way because I don't want to deal with it. I wonder now if things would have turned out differently. Because here we have Tamar, which is the root of the problem, was raped by her brother. Absalom was so angry. David didn't deal with it. So now we got a problem. A problem that led to what? Murder. A problem that led to pride and greed. My God. A problem, my God, that led to things that God was not pleased with. And we are, we are no different today. Instead of, we, of, instead of us dealing with it and getting it out in the open, we rather carry around that baggage of hurt, that baggage of deceit, that baggage of um, 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 molestation, that baggage of um, um, divorce, all kinds of things that we hold on to instead of letting it go. My God, unforgiveness. We walk around with unforgiveness in our hearts. And understand this this morning. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy by any means necessary. He does not care who you think you are. He doesn't care about your title. He don't care about your position. He don't care. He will use anyone to and anything to come up against you. Why? Because he know that his time is not long. But we have to recognize it. Matthew 3 and 19 says this. He says, even now, the acts of God's judgment is paused, ready to, to serve the roots of the tree. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. And now for those of you that may have forgotten, guess what? The axe is still there. The Bible tells us that death comes suddenly and without warning. And if there is no fruit worthy of repentance, guess what? That tree is going to die. So I say to, do, say to you this morning, we must deal with with it we must deal with the sprouts we must deal with the issues at hand it's time for us to deal with the root of the matter in order to cultivate plants my god for indoor use you have to do some root cutting my god i have never been a plant person every time i get a plant it dies on me because <laughs> i'm doing something wrong i'm not cutting the root Whenever you have a plotted plant in your home, you end up with something called root-bound plants. Why is that? Because they are in this container now. And when it begins to grow, it doesn't have enough room 
my God, you don't have enough room inside of you when you begin to allow those issues to be in that pot, my God, that you haven't dealt with, you do not grow. Ah, I hope you hear me this morning. When you don't deal with the root problem, you're just like that indoor plant. You have something that is called root-bound issues. Mm. The pot now becomes full of roots and there's little dirt left. So now as that plant matures, as that plant begins to grow, you find yourself dealing with a root-bound problem. But here's the good news. Once you begin to prune the roots of the tree, it can be repotted. Once you begin to deal with the issues at hand, once you begin, my God, to allow God to deliver you, my God, he can do it. He's the only one that can do it. The hurt, the pain. Yes, he saw when you got molested. He saw when that man or that woman walked out the door. He saw, my God, when your child was on the street. He sees everything. God is all sin. He's omnipresent, my God. But once you begin to allow God to do it, you can be repotted. That momentum, my God, that most spiritual momentum, my God, will increase and you will grow. So once you now cut the thread roots, which are the smaller roots, those stains that nobody can see but you, those stains that you tend to hide, my God, in your closet, and you dare not let it come out. When you deal with the thread roots, and I'm, and I'm talking about the large roots now, the, it, it says that when you deal with the smaller roots, you will begin to stunt that plant which will allow it now to be repotted and to grow. Once you let go of the issues at hand, once you deal with it, then you can grow into what God has for you and his purpose that he has for your life. Don't be bound, my God, holding on to things that really don't matter. Because if we stay root bounded, guess what? Eventually, when you don't deal with that plant, and it's probably why my plants always die. <laughs> if you don't deal with that plant, if you don't deal with the root of the problem, like that plant, you will die. My God, we got to deal with it. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. God, we bless you and we honor you. We thank you for this word this morning. Some of us, so oh God, has been holding on to things that we have not let, not let go and from our past time, our past life, God, as we were growing up as kids. Some of us, oh God, has got to break the generational curse. We got to say, no, it ends, it stops with me. My God, the spirit of alcohol, the spirit of drugs, the spirit, my God, of, of being permissive, the spirit of just, just being rebellious, having a spirit of retaliation. God, we got to deal with the issues of hand, the spirit of rejection. Many of us are, have been rejected, and this is why, my God, when someone tries to get close to us, oh God, we push them away, and we, and we treat them badly. God, we pray in this season that we will learn how to deal with the matter that we will deal with the root oh god is so that we don't be bound like that plant not being able to grow god you want to grow us mm. You want to grow us, oh God. You want us to prosper. God, you said that you wish above all that we will be in good health and that we will prosper. But many of us are spiritually dying because we have not learned how to get to the root of the problem. God, I pray in this season that we will take a self-examination, that we will examine ourselves, oh God, that we will be presentable unto you, Father, that we, Father, will gain our spiritual momentum. 
God, I pray now, Father, that this word will not fall on deaf ears, God. That this word, oh God, will not fall on rocky and stony ground. But God, this word will fall on those, oh God, that are seeking, oh God, that wants to be delivered and set free. I pray this morning, Father God, that you will harden not the hearts of your people, that we will be honest, oh God, that we will be honest with you, Lord. That you will help us, oh God. Now, God, I thank you and I bless you. And God, we will learn to deal with the root problem. We will deal with it, oh God. Because we don't want to end up like Absalom. We don't want to end up, oh God, in the grave without serving our purpose. Now, God, we bless you and we seal this word. We seal this prayer, Lord God. We come against the spirit of retaliation, delay, or immediate. We counsel every plot and every scheme of the enemy. And God, we say that it is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Listen tonight by way of conference call at 8.30 p.m. Yes, we are still praying. The word of the Lord tells us to pray without ceasing. Mm. And then Jesus taught a parable in Luke 18. He said this. He said that men ought to always pray and faint not. And I don't know about you, but prayer changes things. Mm. And the one thing that the enemy desires, he desires to take your prayer life. Listen, you don't have to pray on the line. I will do the praying. If you want to pray, you can pray. Just join us at 8.30 p.m. as we come together and we seek the Lord, my God. And, and, and if you can't join us tonight, when all you have to do is just dial in, put your phone on mute. If you can't join us tonight, join us on Monday night. We have been doing a study on the book of John. Why? Because the Lord told me at the beginning of the year, he wants his people to know who he is. <laughs> so we are studying the book of John. We are in chapter 5, and that is also by way of conference call. You can find the number um, and the access code by way of Facebook, um, Seeking the Face of God ministry page, or you can do Kimberly Perkins Furby or Kimberly Furby. You can find all the information you need to join us on Monday and Wednesday night. And again, share this video with someone. I'm sure, my God, that somebody is dealing with some issues and they're finding, trying to find a way out. My God, I pray that you all will be blessed. And join us back here on next Wednesday um, with Word Empowerment Wednesday at 5 a.m. Amen. And, and I say to you, as I say every week, something great is going going to happen for you and how do i know this because <laughs> we serve a great and mighty god guess what he cannot fail and he never will i don't care what happens i don't care what goes he cannot fail in fact he even left us a promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us so i say to you go and make today great why because you are the apple of god's eye god bless you